Hey everyone and welcome back to day six of our daily Kent test preparation videos for the 2022 paper. It's happening in less than two weeks now. So hopefully this video will help you with some last minute preparation with your child. We are going to jump into a non-verbal reasoning question today. You can see it on the screen. It's odd one out. And I love this one because it's a really simple technique and a rule we can think of which makes these questions much easier and much clearer how to solve. Let's dive into the first question. So you're given five shapes and it's our job to select the shape which is the odd one out. Now the best way to think about it is in our pink box as always. So the first se sentence says, which shape is different to the others? That's quite obvious when you're looking for odd one out. However, that won't always get you the right answer. For example, let's look at B, okay? B here we could say is the only shape with this arch. It's the only one that has that kind of arc shape coming over. The rest don't, it must be the odd one out. No, it doesn't work like that. This is where the second sentence comes in really handy. Do all four of the other shapes share something in common? This is what's going to define something that's the odd one out. We need to find a shape that's the odd one out because the other four have something that is the same. Now, let's look at our example there of thinking B might be the odd one out. It's the only one with an arch. That would only work if every other shape had the same symbol that wasn't an arch. And it's clearly not true. We've got triangles here. We've got kind of like a block shape here. We've got curly lines there. No, that's not going to get us an answer. However, now that we know we're looking for four shapes that are the same somehow, we're going to be able to find the odd one out. So let's try and solve this one. Let's look at A. Uh, we've got triangles here, got two sides coming out. In fact, in all of them, we have two things popping out. So that's quite similar. The rotation of the shape doesn't seem to matter because we've got three B, C and E that are vertical and A and D have kind of been swapped around. So that's two. We're not looking for odd two out, but there is something that's catching my eye. Let's look at B. Can you see how these two small shapes here are the same as the large shape opposite? Same for C. Two small shapes, the same as the large one. Same for D, these two small shapes match the larger one. And same for E, these two small shapes also match the large one on the other side. So for B, C, D, and E, we have something in common. The small shapes match the larger shape. What about A? Aha, here we have two triangles. If we were going by the other four shapes, we should have a big triangle on this side, but we don't we have this odd shape here poking out. Therefore, we can put A as the odd one out. Remember, top tip for this question, the other four shapes have to have something in common. Right, so now we've got our technique, we should be able to solve these questions much more quickly. And always feel free to pause this video, get your children to have a go, see how they get on using our advice. Here's question two. Remember, we're looking for four shapes that are the same somehow, and one that's different. Very quickly, we could say A is the odd one out because it's the only square, but we know now that that's not going to work. The other four shapes are all different. If the other four are all circles, then we could justify it, but they're not. So we need something a lot more specific here. What do these shapes have in common? Well, I can see here in A that I've got two quarters of this shape is shaded. I can see here in B, and this is where maths knowledge is going to come in really handy, we do have two sections shaded, but we can't label this as a fraction as two quarters. You might already know why. It's because these parts are not equal. Each part here is not equal to exactly one quarter. Hopefully it's really clear how this triangle section here is much smaller than this trapezium se section up the top. We can't say that this shape has two quarters shaded. It has less than two quarters shaded. So that's something that's different. I'm just going to try out the other shapes and see now. Aha, C. Can you just imagine if we move this shading up to the top? So this bit shaded now up here, and you can hopefully see that that there is one half shaded. This is where math is coming in handy again, because one half is equal to two quarters. So A has one half shaded. B, uh, sorry, C has one half shaded. B had less than one half shaded, so we got less. So B's different, and now I'm hoping, I'm gonna have my fingers crossed, that D and E also have half shaded, because then we found our answer. Let's look at D, aha, again, a bit of a trick here. It doesn't look like a half if we just glance at it, because these aren't equal parts here, 
but we need to use our spatial reasoning, move some shading over. Can you see how this is just a mirror image? This section is a mirror image of the left-hand section here. So imagine now that we've moved this over, and can you see, that's right, D actually has a half shaded. If E has a half shaded, we found our answer, and it does, look. We can see here that this octagon, it's been split into four equal parts, two of them are shaded, two quarters is the same as one half, therefore A, C, D, and E all have exactly one half shaded, and we can say safely now that B is the odd one out, it does not have exactly one half shaded, we needed a bit of mass knowledge for this one. Okay, I've got one more to go through of you because I want to show you something that they like to do in this test paper and it's to try and throw you off. So we're gonna solve this one together. Feel free to pause, have a go at home with your children and then I'm gonna set you on at the end anyway to answer in the comments. So let's take a look here at question three. A, B, C, D and E. There is lots going on here, okay? A has some kind of quadrilateral, big shape, four-sided. There's a five-sided small shape here. There's a three-sided triangle there, okay? so. There's lots to try and take in here. This one has a circle. Do the others have a circle? Mm, one does, so it can't be something to do with a small circle. And what children can tend to do in these situations is go down a rabbit hole. There's lots of things to look at. They've been put there as red herrings. They're trying to distract you and make you waste your time. The answer to this question is a lot more simple. Let's look at A here. The large shape is four-sided. It's a quadrilateral. In B, the large shape is four-sided. And remember guys, we're always looking for four things that are the same. We waste our time on the small shapes, we're never going to find four things the same, one thing different. Look at this large shape here, D. This is a four-sided shape. So we know we can stop looking if we find a fourth four-sided shape. And guess what, we've got it, it's an E. This is a square here that's been rotated. And it's as simple as that. Once we've found four things that something has in common, the odd one out is left. So the answer here is C. This is the only five-sided large shape in the middle. The small shapes are there simply to distract, waste time, and put us off. So it's your turn. Look at the pink box at the bottom. Check out our techniques that we talked about today. Four shapes the same somehow. We must be left with the odd one out. That's going to be our answer. Leave a comment below if you think you found it and thank you for those likes and comments that you've been putting on this series so far. We will be back tomorrow because yes, we are releasing daily videos all the way up until the Kent Test 2022. See you next time.